How can I clean silver with kitchen foil? How does an archer fish shoot its supper? And how do you train a tea towel? Come on, boy. Hup, hup. Whoa! One rubber lift twenty. A? Uh, eh? Were you talking about balancing the How weight? How can of... one rubber lift twenty? It's absolutely can't impossible. Lift twenty, Fred. One rubber cannot do it. One little rubber there. Yes. How can that one little rubber lift a bag full of can't twenty rubbers? Can't do it. No, impossible. Ten P says I can show you how. Ten P says you can't. Uh, my ten P says you definitely won't. I will now show you how. Are you ready? Yep. There. <laughs> What's that? That's a cotton reel, Carol. You didn't yeah. say anything about a cotton but reel. But you never asked, but it's an important part of this particular experiment mm. because it's still going to happen. Watch the one rubber. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. And slowly but surely, <laughs> it all goes up and down. On my command, up and down. And up. <laughs> How's it done? The centrifugal force created by that one spinning rubber is enough to lift the bag full of rubbers. And that's how... One rubber can lift 20. <laughs> How do you get goosebumps? When you're scared witless. Oh, when, when you're cold, you always it's, get goosebumps on the back of That is in. when you get goosebumps, but how do you get them? Let us conduct a little experiment. Now, Gareth, can you roll your sleeve up, please? Mm -hmm. And by your side, you'll find a nice patch. Can you put that against your arm? And exactly as you'd said, gentlemen, when you're cold, you get goosebumps. Take the ice pack away, and there we have them can see on the arm. How do we get them? Well, I can show you with the aid of a sensational device fresh from the research laboratories of the Borden Corporation. It is the amazing goose bumping machine and here it is. It's a margarine box with blue tack sticks it and cling film. It may look film. like yes, that to you. It may look like that to you. These toothpicks are hairs. These blue bits here are the roots or the follicles. This plastic is the skin and the orange balloon is the muscle. Now what happens when you are excited or extremely cold very suddenly? The muscle contracts. <sighs> like so, and it pushes against the roots, the hairs rise, and that is how you get the goose bumps on your skin. And when you relax, the muscle expands and the hairs fall flat. Carol, Carol, you said when the muscle expands yes. and you let all the air out of the balloon, it, it went small, it's wrong. Yes, He's yes. right. all right. Well, look at this then, will you, please? Now, the hairs are flat against the skin. The muscle contracts, which causes the hairs to rise. It drags behind them the follicles or the roots, which create the bumps, the goose bumps that you see on your skin. And that is how, with the aid of this magnificent device, I can show you how you get goosebumps. How can I see a picture with a quick stick? You can't see a picture with a stick. <laughs> What's a quick stick? Well, a white stick? It's a white stick. I'll come to the quick in a minute. But I can, in fact, make a picture appear out of thin air using my white stick here and my black gloved you hand. I will also need another piece of technology, a projector and a black room. Now then, this projector is, in fact, projecting a picture into this area here, but you can't see it because it's black. Normally, I'd use a white projector screen. On this occasion, I'm going to use a white stick, and we'll see one line of the picture, hopefully. If I move it down here, you should see somewhere along there, a picture starts to appear. There, I can see a hairline and a forehead. Now, television delivers its pictures in a series of lines. We see all the lines at the same time. But um, on this occasion, we're only seeing one line as I go. Look, there's a shirt. Now, this is where the quick bit comes in. If I start wagging my stick quickly, you will see more than one line. Now, you two, can you guess who this might that, be in this picture? I know picture? exactly who it is. Prince Charles. No, no, no. no it's more hell. Pavarotti. No, thinner, thinner. Not I know, Pavarotti. it's Timmy Mallet. No, is it no, Timmy Mallet? It's Dave Edna. It's Even not Dave Edna. Who is it, Carol? It's Come on. It's no me, you fool. It's Fred uh, Dinesh, our own, our very own Fred Dinesh. Now, how this works is really very clever. It's a bit like animation in that um, the stick 
is moving faster than your eyes can receive the pictures coming in. So your eyes think they're seeing an entire picture all at one time, but the truth is you are in fact seeing lots of lines very quickly after each other, very close together, and your brain works out the rest so you can see a full picture of our Fred. So that's how you can see a picture with a quick stick. How does an archer fish shoot its supper? I don't know. I've never seen an archer fish. Well, I bet we're going to find out, though, Fred, aren't we? So? An amazing little creature, this, the Robin Hood of the aqua world. Come with me and we'll find out how. Because the archer fish can, in fact, shoot its prey from as far away as 12 feet, 3.6 metres. How? David Manning will explain. David, the archer fish, tell us a bit about it. It's a very small fish from Southeast Asia. It tends to live in coastal areas around mangrove swamps and river estuaries. And they actually hunt under the water looking for insects that are climbing around on branches or leaves above the water surface. And how do they shoot them? Well, the inside of their mouth is arranged somewhat like a water pistol, and they can actually compress and fire a few droplets of water at a time very accurately at the insect. See, where this is really clever is that water distorts images. If I stick this straw into the water, on top of the water it's at one angle, Beneath the water, it appears to be at quite a different angle. Now, what does the archer fish do about that? How does it compensate? Well, it actually allows for that when it is shooting. And you can see here on the graphics where the insect really is and then where it appears to be from the fish's point of view. It's amazing that the creature is able to do that. I wonder if we could see how it's done. If you would stick an insect on the branch, and let's see if we, okay, I'm sure if we, can. we can see the whole thing now actually here. happen. There's the insect on the branch, fish there, oh, oh, he's seen it already, incredible, shoots it off and into the water, but it happens so amazingly fast, doesn't it? It does very quick. I wonder if you could actually slow that down and see it happen again. That's it, you see the jet of water, stuns the insect, insect into the water, and the archer fish has got his lunch. That's incredible, and that's how the archer fish shoots its supper. Time for an instant how. How can you train a tea towel? What do you mean, Trent? To do the washing up, that would be very good. That would be a very good idea. Yes, now, I, I've actually trained my tea towel to perform fantastic stunts at my command. Are you ready? Fantastic stunts. Watch this, right? Yeah. Okay. You ready, tea towel? Fantastic stunts. Ready? Wait. How about that? <laughs> And there you go there. <laughs> it's got a mind of its own. It has. How am I doing it? If you haven't already worked it out, it's pretty obvious I'm using a spoon round the back. But if you look round the back, this is what you do. You hold the spoon with your thumb yeah. and your forefinger. Can you do this? Right? Yeah. And you flick the spoon into the tea towel there. Now, the real trick is that round the front, I've got three fingers round the front. And that looks as if I've got all my fingers. So I couldn't possibly be holding something. Go on, have a go, Fred. You train your tea towel. <laughs> 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 Carol is very well trained. Very well trained. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you train a tea towel. And I wish I could train mine to do the washing up. It saved me doing it. <laughs> how can I clean silver with aluminium foil? Is it a bit like his tea towel? There's nothing like his tea towel. Do you no. rub? Do you rub it with the, the silver foil? With a kitchen pot? No, absolutely not at all. Here we have dirty silver cutlery. A very helpful household handy hint for you. What you do is you get a bowl, like so, and you put the aluminium foil, it's not silver, it looks silver, it's actually aluminium foil, into the bottom of the bowl. Mm -hmm. Then you get some water into which you've dissolved some washing soda crystals. Just put a whole pile of them into the warm water and pour that on top of the kitchen foil, like that. Now you make that fairly deep because the next thing you're going to do is simply place, and I just need to put my gloves on here, simply place the dirty silver cutlery on top of the kitchen foil. And you'll start to see a little bit of fizzing going on in there. Can you see that? Bubbles starting to form yeah, on top from of the, the silver. silver spoon. Right. Now, what's happening is you have two different metals. You have aluminium and silver. And between them, they're starting to create an electric battery. And the tarnish, which is on top of the silver, is being taken off the silver. It goes through the water, which has got the washing soda crystals in, and attaches itself to the aluminium. And it happens fairly quickly. If I just take one of these out, just take this out, and start to clean the top. Can you see? That's starting to come up. 
extraordinary. Good, yes. That's quick. It is fast. Now, if you leave it for a couple of hours or so, very, very simple, this one. It comes out looking just like this. Extremely clean silver cutlery, very dirty kitchen foil. You can see the tarnish has attached itself to the aluminium. And uh, if you are going to do this, rinse it very carefully before you use it with food. Then if I just polish that up, just buff it up, there it is. That is how I can clean silver with kitchen foil. So domesticated. Sit a dachin sharad kamrai. What are you talking about? How do you speak Welsh? Dwi'n sharad kamrai gyda dwi'n bach, Carol. Oh, dai am, Carol. Ti'n sharad kamrai, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all very well, because she's one of them. She is Welsh. Yeah. I'm not Welsh. I can't speak Welsh. Don't worry, Fred. I can teach you how to speak Welsh. Could you? Yeah, yeah. But first, let us discuss the complexities of the English language. A very tricky language to read. Now, Fred, your English. Can you read that word for me, please? Slough. Slough. All right. So, how do you say that? Tough. Yeah, well, why don't you say that? Tow. Let's try another one. Surely you'd expect tough to be written like that. But no, it isn't. Okay, um, how do you pronounce that? That's slough. Yeah, yeah, but you don't spell slough like that. You spell it like that, don't you? Which is the same as slough. It's just far too complicated. Now, Welsh is slightly less complicated. If you can read baby language, read phonetics, you can read Welsh. Because the Welsh alphabet goes A, B, K, Ha. Da, what yeah. about the two L's, the double L's? All right, double L is one letter in Welsh, and this is how you say it. You put your tongue to the roof of your mouth, and you blow out sideways. It's the sound of a snake with a lisp, perhaps. It goes like this. <laughs> try it, Fred. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> OK, let's try and read some Welsh. Now, remember, it's phonetics. And so phonetically, the letter W is said, ooh. So what have we got here? Oosh. Ooh. 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 Very good, Ooh. very good, very good. Okay, let's try it with another letter in front as well. A p, 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 ooh, push, push, push. Very good, very good. Yeah, yeah, now we're not, you see, because you're giving me all the kids stuff. But I mean, Welsh is full of long words, isn't it? Oh, you, know? you shouldn't be afraid of the long words. No. Words like this, you mean? All you have to do with them is break them down into smaller bits, into their syllables. For instance, that says fan. Quite right. Fan. And that says ta. Yeah, and that says? Cilia. So all in one, Fred? Cilia. Perfect. There's only one thing to do now, you What's know. What's that? Take him to Wales. Come oh, with yes. me. Come on. You see, in Wales, we've got this town with an enormously long name. I've heard of it. And on the railway station of that town is an enormously long sign. Yeah. And we're going to teach you how to pronounce that town, OK? Me? Yeah. Carol, mm -hmm. um, here we go. You ready? This is what it's like. Shanvar Pusquin Gisgo Geru Sandropoi Santisilio Go Go Go. Great lads, great. No, no, Fred, 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 come here, don't be afraid. Carol, can you help? Can you flip the words over? You see, what I'm going to do is break this big long word down for you, Fred, into lots of little bits of words. Little bits of words. Yeah, and teach you how to say each of those bits of the words, and then you should be able to say the whole word. And we do this together. No, no, Fred, you'll do it on your own. I'll help you, though. I'll help you. Yeah, yeah, we can manage it. Okay. Okay. You ready, Carol? Have you got there yet? I am, very good. Okay. Right. okay, we'll start with the first one. You've seen that before. Easy peasy, yes. Toppy. Chlan. Chlan. Very good, Fred. Very good. Fair. Vair. 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 Try that one. Puff. Very good, Fred. Puff. Puff. Keep coming, Fred. Gwyn. Gwyn. Very good, Gwyn. Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try that one. Gil. No, it's double L. Gil. Gish. Gish. Very good, Fred. Yeah. Gish. This one. Goggery. Goggery. Very good, Fred. Yes. Go on, Fred. Try that one. Quirn. 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 Yes, he with the hand. Try that one. Drubble. 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 Another Drubble. double L. You've seen before. Shand. Yeah. Hey, uh, how about that one? Cecilio. Yeah, Cecilio. Cecilio. Yeah, and that one. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. And the last one. Go, go. Okay, lovely. See you later. No, no, Fred, come <laughs> here. Uh, Carol, can you flip them all over of again for us? See? You see, Fred, yes. now that you've done it bit by bit by bit, bit by, by bit, I reckon you should be able to do the whole thing in one go. Together. Uh, no, no, you'll do it on your own. I'll be here helping, don't worry. You can actually be the station master at this town. Okay. Uh, Fred, look, yeah. there's your station master's hat. Yes. There's your station master's megaphone. Yes. And, oh, here comes the train. Good luck, Fred. The train's coming. You can do it. Do the announcements. So the train now arriving at platform 18 is the 1508 from Cardiff calling at Clanmire, Puss, Gwyn, Gil, Gogare, Hrill, Gwyn, Clan, Vesilio, Gogo,
Birmingham. Birmingham. Oh. <laughs>